right, you got the job. What's next? The first thing you never really hear about until you're on the job, and maybe you have heard about it if you've done a PhD or something, or you worked at a tech company over the summer, I don't know, but infrastructure. Infrastructure, it's local host when you're in school. Like no one really thinks about how does my code get to my end user, to my client. This is something that actually really matters when you're working for a company. You have to get the product you're creating to your customer. It's no longer a POC, a prototype, you turn it in for a grade, now it's actually profitable. Now as a software developer, some teams might not really work with infrastructure. It depends on how the company you work for is organized, but most software development teams, you'll work on new features in a given programming language, say that's a Java, that's a Python, that's a C++, that's a C Sharp, and maybe you also get to work on infrastructure stuff that could be on AWS, Amazon Web Services, it could be on the Google Cloud, it could be on Azure. These are things you really don't get to experiment with. Obviously, this would be before whatever you're working on goes to production, but you get to experiment with these new technologies, and a lot of times, if your company is heavily invested in one of these cloud providers, they will have people from that company come on site and show you how it all works. They'll be representatives from your Azure, from your AWS, from your Google Cloud, and they'll come to your company and help you integrate it into your system. So if you have the opportunity to learn infrastructure in your team, I would highly recommend you take it. Infrastructure is something that is all like, unless you're recreating your infrastructure or migrating your infrastructure or going to a new team and the team, you have to build this new service and you need infrastructure for that service, like it's kind of hard to come by infrastructure work. So if you see it, definitely take it. You can always make more features in your given programming language of choice, but infrastructure work is kind of unique, and it's nice to add something to your tool belt as a software developer. When you're learning all about infrastructure, you'll probably learn about the Bash shell, so how to do shell scripting with Bash. You'll learn about Docker, you'll learn about possibly CICD, so you might be doing some Jenkins, you might be doing some Concourse or Circle CI, one of those automation platforms for your deployments. You also might be learning about infrastructure as code, which is something like Terraform or CloudFormation, and there are many others out there that allow you to configure your infrastructure with a configuration file. That means you don't have to go into the platform and do it manually, which is great. On the job, you're also going to learn about security. Security is something that is barely touched on a lot of times in college or in a boot camp. It's something that maybe you learn about a few policies and the idea like, yeah, I should encrypt things. But in security for a company, depending on how valuable your asset is, you may be learning a lot about security. There's also sometimes a security review team that'll come to your team or that will come to your organization and review how secure your product is and then they'll give you recommendations on how you can improve it. You can learn from these recommendations so then you can make better products in the future. Once you're on the job, you also have to finally learn Git. <laughs> you have to learn the Git, the GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever cloud version control platform platform you use, you have to really understand it because you are no longer working by yourself. Like a lot of times in college or in a boot camp, it's just you, you're working on a program, you hear about version control and you kind of just commit every so often and your commit messages don't really matter. Now on a team, you're going to be working with multiple developers and you have to work from the same code base and integrate each other's changes into this big monster of a code base. This means you'll learn how to deal with the merge conflicts. That's something I really learned on the job, the idea of creating a new branch, creating a pull request, merging in your changes. Okay, now I need to merge in the newest version of our code base. All that stuff, you'll learn it and you'll master it on the job. Another thing we really don't talk about uh, are logging and dashboards. It's the idea of, can, do you know how much your application has errored in the past 24 hours? How many customers had a non-200 error code associated with their response. And so when you get a 404 or 401 or whatever the arrow code is, we can track that and calculate that as owners of a software application. This helps us know are our users mad at us, one, and how well our application is working. Ideally, you wouldn't find bugs or errors at this stage when it's hitting your customers, but things happen. And this is a starting point for how you can solve the error with your application. I've also learned that coding is really an art form. This really isn't emphasized when you're in school or you're in a boot camp. 
you kind of just work to make the application do what you want it to do. You don't think about, okay, am I writing this code in the most reasonable way? Ideally, you're covering all your cases and this POC are in like the projects you work on before you get to the full job. But the way you code versus the output of your code really matters once you get on the job. You'll likely have code reviews where you'll work on a feature or a bug fix or something you want to add to the code base that maybe adds on to the functionality of your product, it fixes a bug, it changes the way a certain operation in your code is written. Once you've done the work for that, you'll submit your code for review and other developers on your team will review your code for things like one, does it work? Two, does the implementation make sense? So did, does how you made the change make sense for what what the purpose of the change was is it using functionality that's already created versus creating its own functionality a lot of times when you're working in school or in a boot camp you're encouraged to do everything from scratch to really understand the details of everything that's going on but when you get on the job a lot of that stuff is already written for you and you just have to figure out okay what libraries are available to me what are the coding conventions of the code base that i'm working in what are the standards? Do we always use a given function to iterate through a list of elements? Do we like nested if statements? Like certain things like that that have to do less with the functionality of the code and more with the art of the code. Through these code reviews, whether it's you reviewing someone else's code or someone reviewing your code, you're really gonna learn the intricacies of the given programming language. I code in Java most of the time, sometimes in Python, and sometimes in the cloud, stuff in the cloud, but I really learned a lot about the new versions of Java because everything in school is really focused on Java 7 and below, and the features that those releases gave versus the new functionality that's becoming a little bit more functional rather than object oriented that's being introduced. On the job, I've also learned about a bunch of new tools I can use to edit my code. I used to love IntelliJ and NetBeans, but now I use VS Code to write my code. There are lots of other softwares you could use. There's Postman versus Insomnia. There's Sublime versus Atom and really you get introduced to a lot of new tools that everyone just happens to be using when you get into the industry. There are also the more simpler things like Chrome versus Firefox. Many people on the job also have customized terminals. I've customized my terminal on my personal computer, but I, I just don't get, I don't know. I, I do work in the terminal, I would say, but I don't know, is that, that seems to be a pretty big thing that people customize their terminal. Do you? Leave a comment down below. A lot of times when you join a team, you're not gonna be working when they're starting the code base. They've already written lots of code for the code base, for the service that they're working on, or the product that they're working on, and you have to jump in in the middle. This is something that you don't really do before you're working on the job, and so I've really learned how to use the debugger and how to have breakpoints and how to add all of that stuff. It's no longer print statements. You definitely want to use your debugger in figuring out what is going on when you first start as a developer. Like, understanding there are probably millions of lines of code already written. And it's likely you'll never learn every single piece and memorize every single line of code, but you can use the debugger and other tools to get a grasp of what's going on. And that's really the most important part. On the job, you should also ask lots of questions. You may have been someone in learning computer science that never asked questions, maybe asked too many questions, like always went to office hours, that was me. Uh, so figuring out the balance on the job of asking questions versus trying to go and figure it out on your own is kind of tricky. If you spend you know, weeks going on and figuring it out on your own, then you're wasting company money. They're paying you and you're not figuring it out. If you just ask someone from another team, like, hey, how did you go about this? Or what was your approach to this? It could have saved weeks of your time, but also the company's time. Keeping that in mind though, you don't wanna go and ask a question about every single problem that you have with your code. You need to put in a little bit of effort, and I would say maybe that's like an hour or two, maybe a day or two, depending on how close you feel on figuring it out and how much runway you've given yourself. But if you feel stuck and frustrated, that means it's time to ask someone a question or just walk and take a break. Some of the more softer skills things I've learned on the job as a developer is you really need to know your audience in a meeting. When you're presenting something, is your audience very technical so you can go into the super technical implementation details of how something works? 
or is your audience less technical so you're going to look at the bigger picture of what's going on and why this given feature or functionality is profitable and how it's going to help sell your product or brand your product or go with the vision of where the product's going if you understand your audience it's easier to get your point across Another thing I've really learned on the job is how to read through documentation. You may have learned this if you went to hackathons. A lot of times hackathons will have sponsors and they'll give you an API you can work with and you can read through that documentation and figure it out super quick. But when it comes to things that are not APIs and just general technologies and how they work, that can sometimes be difficult to grasp, especially if you're configuring something. So maybe like the thing you're trying to build isn't like, okay, I wanna build this feature and I need this API and I need this functionality. Maybe it's a configuration of a system. How do you know your configurations are correct for the product you are creating? You have to read through documentation and really understand, okay, this is the right configuration for my product because we want this amount of security or we want this amount of compute power or we know we're gonna get this many clients or hits to our service. That's tough. <laughs> That's something I'm definitely still learning. And the last thing, in school it feels like you could build anything. You just have to put your time towards it. In the real world, on the job, that is not the case. There's only so much budget, so much time, so you really have to pick and choose what you're going to work on. You can't build everything. You have to make hard choices about what the priorities are in order to reach your goals. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. Stay sane in quarantine and happy coding.